Welcome back. This is part two of my video essay on loot in first-person shooters entitled What We Loot Determines How We Shoot. Today I'm going to look at two more ways in which different shooters trained different sorts of playstyles through their use of loot in their games. Shout out, by the way, to Triple Jump for giving me the idea to look back into this first one, Warframe. For those who don't know what Warframe is, it is meant to be a competitor for Destiny that has you playing a space ninja, and while the game didn't get a huge reception back when it first came out, it's actually been growing a lot of attention for constant updates and constant new information to where it's one of the older games in its genre and still holds strong. One of the ways they've done that is their loot system. Through allowing players to pick up not only weapons, but allowing the player to pick up materials that can be used to upgrade the weapons they have, to upgrade the armors they're using, or generally any other things including the ship, the designers have encouraged players to repeat playing maps to find whatever upgrade they might need at the time. The materials and items dropped in the map also can be used in a crafting system, meaning every single item that drops is valuable to the player. Because at any given time a player may find the last piece they might need for their new weapon, they are going to continue to loot anything that drops in any one of these levels. And often, with the drop rates, they're going to find themselves repeating these levels more than a few times before they actually find what they need. This plays a especially well with the MMO-like aspect of the game, meaning that new players going through a mission for story purposes can usually find a more experienced player there to help them because they still have something that they need to loot for their 35th run of this particular level. This also holds value for the experienced player because they get an opportunity to show off the things they've worked for. They're usually very shiny, very um, appealing, and they're going to turn heads, which is what a lot of players who are going to put in daily time into a single game are really looking for. Moving forward to today's second game, I want to take a look at Halo Reach. I really could have picked any of the Halo games here, but this was one of the more fresh in my mind. In a stark contrast to what we've been looking at in games that are known as looter shooters, such as Borderlands and Warframe, Halo games tend to give you very little options for what you can pick up. In general, your player can only carry two weapons out of the dozens that are included in the Halo games. Players will also notice that not many of the weapons have a very large pool of ammo. This makes a player strategically pick out what they're going to do with their weapons, as they may not have the ammo on them to use their preferred weapon for an entire battle. The more conventional human weapons are going to be found in drop pods or in storage lockers, but in some battlefields those are simply few and far between, meaning the player is likely going to have to take covenant weapons. Combine that with a lack of shared ammo types between weapons, including some covenant weapons which are just thrown away after they're used. I'll end up with the relatively simple to understand human weapons, it's actually possible to get most of your ammo by kind of letting the marines around you die, which would seem like a fail scenario, but here that's just how you keep firing. On the other hand, you want to try to save these marines, you're gonna have to spend some time learning your covenant weapons. 